All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be looking at some comments made by Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen at their recent live show in Austin. In case you missed it, the Fighter and the Kid podcast did a live taping at the Vulcan Gas Company in Austin last week. And look at this guy. Props to him for realizing his mistake of showing up to this hellhole and leaving before the show even starts. So the whole show was a real flop. This is really the Fighter and the Kid. The guys floundered on the stage for an hour to a half-empty club and every single joke bombed. It was great. But as they were flailing around and grasping for topics, Brock Lesnar's name came up. They were talking about Brendan's son looking so much like Brendan, and they called it the Brock Lesnar phenomenon, since Brock's daughter Maya looks so much like her dad. So this is her, maybe you saw this going viral recently, her name's Maya Lesnar. She's actually a competitive shot putter out of Colorado State University. Yeah, she fucking rules. Look at this shit. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So Maya's out here just smashing records in shot put, doing incredible stuff. Very inspirational young woman who is just excelling in her field. That's a big trigger for Brendan, whose college athletic career in football, which he still won't shut up about 30 years later, culminated in one carry for four yards and three receptions for eight yards. That's it. That's the whole thing. He was gifted an athlete's body, but cursed with a child's brain. It's sad, could never make use of that thing. It's like owning a 1,000 horsepower truck, but not knowing how to drive it without catastrophically flipping it over. Not Maya, though. I don't know if it's because she's now a record holder at his old alma mater, but Brendan really changed his tune about Maya Lesnar after she put her name in the record books at the University of Colorado. Yeah, that's her breaking the Colorado State women's shot put record right there. 18.5 meters. Hell yeah. All Brendan can do is make up these insane stories about bench pressing 42 reps at 225 pounds. This isn't even a brag. Just It's just yeah, this yeah. Is where I come from. Yeah. But well, two summers ago, I did 225 42 times. So 42 reps would literally put him in the top 10 all time at the NFL Combine. And guaranteed, if this was true, he would make a video of it and turn it into content. Sean McCorkle even bet Brendan 100K grand that he couldn't do it. He was met with crickets. Oh, this more. is his second attempt, by the way. He did nine before this. Couldn't get it. He got wrist straps on. So, don't count. Don't count. Don't count. He did this nine don't times. Count. Look, I don't know if he's don't brain count. damaged or depressed or has low self esteem for some reason, but he loves diminishing other people's accomplishments and embellishing his own. And I won't take away what he achieved in UFC. I mean, being in the top 10 of the heavyweight division is no easy feat. But it's sad because. It's like now that that's all over, he probably feels that part of his identity slipping away or something, and instead of just aging gracefully, he decides to act like he is still in peak physical shape. Brendan, you are 40, and live a sedentary life just rotting away in that podcasting chair for years. You're not fooling anybody except maybe yourself. Though I doubt he even believes this crap either, but he can't stop, because there is no free will, guys. So yeah, shout out to Maya Lesnar, who actually rules. So let's cut back to the stepmothership and see what Brendan and Brian had to say about her. I feel like your genes washed, like your son is beautiful, but he looks like you had sex with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, you mean, you mean like Brock Lesnar's daughter? <laughs> yes, it's, that, it's the Brock Lesnar, it's the Brock Lesnar phenomenon. You know when she came out, Brock's like, okay, okay, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. I see shot put in her future, yeah. fuck yeah. That it's poor amazing. girl, heavy lies the crown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a guy out there. I mean, I. I Is want... there? Yeah, Listen yeah. to this zinger. <laughs> Is a, there? There's a large black man out there. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. No, you know that's true. Come on. Come on. Racism. No, here's the thing. <laughs> this joke doesn't even make sense. Brendan Fake laughs at the idea of just a black guy. I don't understand this. Like, what is this fake laughing bit here? Who is he performing this for? It must be cool for Brock, though, because he probably wanted a boy, got the girl, but she just happens to be a fucking freak. Yeah. You know, I'd love to see Brendan's reaction if someone talked about his daughter the way he talks about Maya. Probably dust off and unleash those amazing monster lawyers he keeps on a 500k retainer or whatever. Be honest. Both these guys would give up their own children to a demonic wishmaster if they could become this jacked. And while Brendan's trying his hardest to get his son a participation trophy, at the local t-ball tournament. Lesnar is just crushing records and tossing that orb into the stratosphere. And also Brock Lesnar is like everything Brendan pretends to be. A big strong guy, amazing wrestler, amazing entertainer, loves guns, hunting, he lives out in the middle of nowhere in friggin Saskatchewan, doesn't need shit, 
And he's even funnier than Brendan. You make the show. Oh. Friday nights, like, your your color commentary is, is bar none, like, the best. Hey, so don't I, break I, the I, table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, Shab is just a pathetic, needy, pampered L.A. puss puss who is so sensitive that he sues YouTubers who hurt his feelings. That's a big difference between a guy like Brock and a guy like Brendan. Brock wants to be great at what he does. Fame is something he has to put up with amid that pursuit. But Shab just wants to be famous. He never actually gets good at anything. All he wants is the fame. And the ironic thing is that he has a bit of the fame now, but it's all just hate and ridicule. All right, back to the electrifying live show. I know, at least we're here at the, why do they call it the Vulcan Gas Company? Does anybody know? Good, me neither. Nothing? Exactly. Incredible stuff. All right, let's see what else they had to say about Maya Lesnar. What's funny about the shot put is, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's worth spending your time doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can throw a cannonball farther than fucking anybody. It's like, okay, you know. Oh, Brian. Fuck off. Like, if that was on a resume, I'd be like, ah, you don't get the job. Like, oh, Brian. Choose a job that pays the bills. Like this, Brian, is this gig paying your bills? How many of your failed zero effort podcasts are paying your bills? What's the alimony at now? Is this show covering that or is this a waste of time too? Yeah, it's a, it's, I mean, it's a weird sport to specialize in. Yeah. As he stands up there with his cauliflower ears that he gave to himself, by the way, with a pair of pliers. Yeah, it's definitely not a sport you could make a movie about. Like, there's no way to build, like... Also, there's no you know money I mean? in it. There's no... What is the point of this? Do they think she's trying to get rich doing shot put? These guys are literally incapable of understanding anybody doing anything that isn't motivated purely by either money or pursuit of fame. There's also no benefits to it. Like, if you walked up into the hottest steakhouse in the fucking, in Austin, yeah. you're like, you, well, I know we don't have reservations, but number one shot putter in the world. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Get the fucking back in the lot. Right. See what I mean? It's almost the equivalent of being able to throw throwing stars. You know, like that guy fucking shreds you with his stars. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe not, but you know what I mean. But also, guy drops more bombs than Netanyahu as they stand on stage to a half-empty crowd, likely losing money on this show. How much money has Shab actually made doing stand-up? He's probably been in the red since Showtime let him go all those moons ago. But also, why doesn't Brock put her in fucking MMA? Why isn't that big bitch wrestling? That, that's such a, <laughs> right? that's such a good idea. I agree with you. Some pigtails? I fucking mean, wrestle, bitch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would, I just think she's... Or like center, like she's like Icebox from Little Giants? She's, yeah, she's a, don't... It's a deep cut, uh, he, if you know Icebox. Do, yeah. do, you know, do you know what yeah, I'm Yeah, you guys know Icebox. Think of her big ass down there fucking like Icebox, dude. Again, I'd love to see Brendan's reaction to anybody saying this stuff about his family. And then right here, you can tell Brian comes to the realization that Brendan is taking this way too far, and he gets very scared at the possibility of Brock hearing this crap. I'm, I'm not I'm not actually getting involved in this conversation because I'm that afraid of Brock, even though he's not here. Like, I don't want to... I'm not trying to meet... You're fun. such a pussy. I am a pussy because I could... He could... Randy Couture still wants to whoop our ass. I, am, I, I love him. And I, I also love him. I feel so bad about that, but we yeah, love him. Yeah, well... But... Um, it's interesting that they bring up Randy Couture here. This is a piece of the fighter and the kid lore that I think a lot of people don't know about. This happened back on episode 417, and long story short... UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture had a personal video of his publicly leaked that showed him uh, pleasuring himself. After the video was leaked, Brendan and Brian reacted to it on their podcast. Randy was in the midst of taking legal action against the woman who leaked the video, and I wouldn't be surprised if he also threatened Brendan with a lawsuit for this. Pretty sure this is illegal with those revenge porn laws or whatever. So that episode of The Fighter and the Kid has this part edited out. First time that an MMA guy has a sex tape that was leaked. Find it for <laughs> us, gotta, man. All I want to know is- Does Captain piece. America have a huge cock? You really want to watch this right now? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, no, I, I mean, yeah. Well, there he is. Dude, also, he is dead serious. <laughs> hey, it's Randy Couture jacking <laughs> it's off, Christmas. bro. It's Christmas, so we may as well watch it. Oh, oh. No, man, I'm watching Randy Couture jack off, bro. <laughs> he's I'm being, sweating. He's dude, being, I'm sweating. Being aggressive. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Fast forward. My well, he's about to bust. Main thing, bro. No, Captain America's no, no, about to bust. Get me goggles. No, USA. No. This podcast really brought the tape to light and really helped 
disseminate the incident. Then here's the apology where he just throws their producer chin under the bus for it. We never know what any of the current events are. We have no idea. Um, chin pulls them from other um, different avenues, different resources, whether it's New York Post. So uh, if you remember a few episodes ago, uh, Chin goes, hey, did you see the Randy Couture right. sex tape? We did our thing uh, mm -hmm. as two comedians, which I think is fair to say as two comedians that run a entertainment comedy show, is we did our best to make light of it. Right. It went viral. It's one of the biggest moments of Fire Kid history. Um, what we didn't know is Randy is in uh, legal action against the young lady who put that video out, which is illegal. Oh, okay. They're just comedians. Well, these guys are always very good at holding themselves accountable. I think the sudden recollection of the Randy Couture incident forced Brian to try and dial this Maya Lesnar thing back a bit. You can tell Brian knows Brendan is taking it too far. He gets scared and tries to change the narrative back into Brendan being this loving, wholesome father. You just, you, so you, you, uh, you're here for your kids because you want them to be... Uh, I'm missing too much it's shit. My, it's just my, not worth the squeeze yeah. anymore. I, like, it's just not, it's just not fun for me anymore. My, and another angle to this whole situation is the fact that Brendan is super protective about people making fun of his family online. He famously refuses to post his daughter's photo which is understandable, people that post their kids online are actual lunatics. But just a few weeks ago, Brendan was doing this performative virtue signaling uh, about how it's a shame the internet is going to be so mean to Maya for looking like her dad, and lamenting the fact that girls and women on the internet have to put up with so much vitriol. It's the first time we saw her, yeah. There must be a really <clears throat> weird experience for her to be like on every fucking meme page and sports site for looking wow. exactly like you know where my head went? house of a father. You know where my house, my, my head went with this is when I saw it, because obviously, you know, she looks like her dad. I'm like, oh, the internet's going to be mean to her. Yeah. That's what my head I went. I think about that. I want that poor girl. I think the about internet's going to be so mean to her. When you have kids, that's. Yeah, just... right away I was like, oh, this poor but girl. But she's awesome. People she are going to be pretty mean to her. Yeah. That, whatever, right when I saw I'm like, ah, oh, that's unfortunate. She, like, she didn't want to go viral. She's doing her thing in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm I'm not, I don't post my daughter. My no. kid, it's weird. It might be sexist. My, my be. sons, I'll post. Mm. They're good. Does, They're savages. They'll, be, they'll beat up any. Old, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't never, matter. Never gonna post doesn't anything. matter. It's three days old. You, people post pictures of their new, newborn. That's the first thing they post. Hmm. I'm not posting my daughter. You never posted the newborn photo. No. Because I feel like I would kind of be willing to post the newborn photo if I have another kid, but I feel like I would just have it be a one and done. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not posting the girl. Mm. The internet's too I mean to, to girls. Why isn't that big bitch wrestling? Ah, but I mean, if you look at the actual comments, everyone thinks she's great. It's just Brendan up there being a miserable asshole, projecting his own feelings about his own failures and shortcomings onto a younger person who is just starting out and has a chance to be successful. These guys spend like 10 minutes talking about her, and it's like 90% about her looks. Then Brendan throws a line out about how he jerks off to Brock's wife. And, and, and is, are probably, these kids all with 11. Sable from WWE? Um, that was my jam. I used to jack it hard to Sable, dude. Ew. Nice. That's Roseanne Barr's fucking <laughs> ugly <laughs> stepsister. It's a crazy pace. <laughs> she looks like the female from Gremlins too. You know, it, looks, it, it looks like that. It's a very good. Come on. The that's female Gremlin. It's a person, dog. No, I know, but it, so is a Gremlin. All right. First of all, Eddie Bravo fucking rules. And, you know, nothing wrong with joking about people's appearances and stuff, but come on, at least make sure it's actually funny. He truly never grew out of that high school bully brain. Just a dumb idiot. Nobody in that accursed studio is laughing, Brendan. You just sound and look like an asshole again. And Brendan just has a long history of putting his foot in his mouth and starting shit about people for no reason and then quickly retreating when there's even the slightest pushback. By all accounts, Brock is a very private person. It would be easy for a guy like him to go around starting shit, but he doesn't. He crushes at whatever he does, then chills at his secluded house with his family. This is how he described his life in an interview in 2016. Quote, it's very basic for me. When I go home, I don't buy into any of the bullshit. Like I said, it's pretty basic. Train, sleep, family, fight. It's my life. I like it. I just don't put myself out there to the fans and prostitute my private life to everybody. In today's day and age, with the internet and cameras and cell phones, I just like being old school and living in the woods and living my life. I came from nothing, and at any moment you can go back to having nothing. Sound familiar? Sound like anyone we know? People are surprised because they've seen what I used to drive, and now I drive the Red Rocket, my little car. Hop in the luxury sedan. It ain't all about looking good. I don't care. 
So then they start doing this ridiculous mime routine. Really sad stuff, guys. Brian even makes eye contact with the camera here, which is automatically going to force him to reflect on the pathetic nature of what he's currently doing inside his own mind. And you know, the inside of his mind right here is just pure hell and misery, so that's fun. But you know, kudos to Brian for at least trying to make something out of this live show. He's trying. He's terrible, but he's trying. Meanwhile, look at Brendan just sitting on the stool like a mushroom. Just zero energy, no enthusiasm. Quite a drag to look at, really. People not only paid money, they took time out of their fleeting lives to watch these guys, and Brendan can't even be bothered to give them anything in return. The laziest con man I've ever seen, honestly. It's hard to believe 20 people actually left their house and paid money to watch this. It's almost the equivalent of being able to throw throwing stars, you know, like that guy fucking shreds you with his stars. Mm. Maybe not. Hear those couple people laughing back there? This reminded me of something Eddie Bravo once brought up that was actually a great observation that I think explains some of this. You just get that core of women that, that had to drag their husbands out and had to beg them, you never take me out, we never go anywhere. And he's like, all right, fuck it, let's go. let's go to the comedy club. She finally drags him out. And this guy is just like, fuck, how much are these drinks? And she wants him to have such a good time that she's laughing at shit that's not even the punchline. <laughs> You know those? There's a core. Sure. There's, there's always just a core, die. and they're just ready to laugh, and they just laugh at at the, the way you say something, even if it's not funny. They just want to laugh because they want their husband to have a good time, and they don't want their husband to think it was a waste of time and a waste of money, and now he's never going to take me out if we're not laughing. If they're just both sitting there like this. So there's always these ladies I've like, I've never thought laugh. of the psychology behind that, well, about, you know, about you, the date night, you know what I mean? Well, you know how I got that? What? I used to hang with Joe Rogan every goddamn weekend. Come on, Brock, let's do this. I want Brock Lesnar to find out about all this and get really upset and enter into a major feud with Brendan. Come on, Brendan. Brock only did 30 reps on the NFL Combine bench press. You can do 42. So this should be easy for you since you're much stronger than this man. Now let me ask you this, and I'm being serious. Brendan gets a call. You want to fight Brock? Would you do it? I would. Th think about it. I'm a bad matchup for Brock. Don't get it twisted. I can box and I have jiu-jitsu. It's a nightmare for me. Are you a bad matchup for Brock? Can, for sure. Okay. But you're not doing a thing against him as a wrestler. You're not taking him don't down. Take him down? Come on, let's go to the ground. See how that goes for you. Huh? What? Brian, you know you want this to happen, too. You were just on Rogan saying you want Brendan to fight Derek Lewis. But Brock is even more fun. Come on, Brian. Stand up for yourself for once in your goddamn life and tell Brendan to stop being a puss-puss and fight Brock. Don't you want to save your podcast? Do something that makes money, right? That's what you said? Well, this is that. You don't get many opportunities in life, and when you do get them, you know, you should, you should grab onto them. What do you think, guys? I think a fight like this could really be the push Brock and Brendan need to turn their ships around. I really would like this rivalry to escalate. Brock easily broke Kurt Angle's neck, and he's an actual thicky. So imagine what he could do to a guy with brittle little ozempic withered bird bones like Brendan, even if Brendan gets put into a coma permanently by Brock. Honestly, guys, I think the whole fighter and the kid phenomenon probably needs to be put to bed soon. It's exhausting. They just keep going. It just never ends. I'm, I don't know. I don't this is think it. I would jerk off to this, but... Meanwhile, here I am eating sardines on saltines for lunch again. Not that I'm complaining. Tinned fish rules. Oh, oh and before I go, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Brendan Cooney and Gerardo from 10 Minutes of Shab for reacting to my last video, The Last Gasps of the Redacted. Flappers, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Is T-E-G reaching out? Yeah. It was great to see a couple guys who just get That's it. Amazing. Yeah. When I first saw this, I was like, flapper. We have to watch this. I love show, this dude. guy, man. Yeah. Elephant Graveyard, one of our best, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm a comedian. A result, presumably, <laughs> Also, shout out to Agostino Zinga for reacting to it as well. That was hilarious. Elephant Graveyard, you're too much, man. I'm not a big fan of our monarchy, so as far as I'm concerned, Zinga is the king of England and my head of state. Cheers. So go over and check out those guys' channels. They are doing important work out here. All right, guys, so make sure to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, subscribe. Like, comment, share the link, share the video, send it around. Let's get the algorithm serving me. Do the work, do it now. It's the least you could do. I don't ask for much, and that's exactly what I'll get. All right, thanks, guys, and don't forget about joining my 
Patreon or Substack page to support the channel. We've got some extra content there, like a podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he drives around New York City exploring the various combos on offer at the local fast food chains as he struggles to create his own original idea without riding the coattails of Carl Sagan. So guys, if that sounds like something you want to experience, guys, then sign up for the Patreon or Substack for five bucks, guys. You got the option to do either, guys, so pick what you like. I just need a little cash to pay for my Adobe subscription and vape carts. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified wherever you are as you go about your daily tasks, grocery shopping, changing diapers, etc. And once you click that notification, make sure you like the video and comment something. Also, subscribe again, create a new account and subscribe with that. Go to your Nan's house and sign her up for the Patreon. All right, guys, and don't forget to share the videos on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, all those sites, guys. All right, I can't do this anymore. Bye. Look, you don't understand. I love this guy. There was shrinkage. Every time we go out to eat, the minute we're done eating, she's running for the bathroom. So you're concerned? Elaine, of course I'm concerned. I'm paying for those meals. Oh, come on, George. You can't say that.